Today, I'll be showing you exactly step-by-step -step how to kickflip on a fingerboard. That's right, today I'm showing you exactly step-by-step -step how to kickflip on a fingerboard. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is clean your grip tape, and I'll show you how to do that. All you wanna do is take some masking tape as long as your fingerboard grip tape take the tape and stick it on the board. Just so I can show you exactly what it looks like, I'll just put it on half of the board so you can really see the difference. Go ahead and do this with the whole board and this is gonna make the trick way easier. And you really only need to clean your grip tape if you have foam grip tape, but if you just have like a tech deck with that sandpaper grip tape, you really don't need to clean that because it's really not gonna do that much. So only clean your grip tape if it is foam grip tape. So now it is time to show you exactly how to do a kick flip. And a common misconception with the kickflip on a fingerboard is that you need to learn an ollie before the kickflip. But that actually isn't the case and some people find doing a kickflip easier than an ollie. Because when you pop the board up, it's gonna kinda naturally wanna just kinda flip out like this. And it's much harder to actually keep your fingers on the board to do an ollie. So the kickflip is definitely one of the best tricks you can learn as a beginner. So you wanna make sure you have the right finger positioning on the board. So don't have your fingers overhanging too much like this and don't have them too close to the edges. If you have your fingers too close to the edges, that's gonna kind of flip the board to the side. And if you have your fingers too far overhanging, it's just not gonna really flip the board too much. So where you wanna have your fingers is you wanna have your middle finger on the very tail of the board like this. This is the nose, this is the tail. Have your middle finger on the tail of the board. And I like to have my fingers about here on the board. So the flipping motion of the board is you wanna pop the board up like this. And what ultimately flips the board is you kind of sliding your fingers to one side like this, making the board flip like that. And a lot of people think that when they do the kick flip, they need to pop the board up and it's like a one finger motion actually flipping the board like that. Kind of like what you'd expect on a real skateboard. But what it actually really is, is sliding kind of both your fingers to one side and that's what flips the board. So practice kind of snapping the board down just like this and you can even just start doing like a super basic ollie, just like barely even getting any air time and kind of just doing this. Instead when you pop it like this, just kind of let your fingers go in the air and see what happens. And something that really does help is kind of just experiment with different ways of flipping the board until you accidentally do a kick flip and then try to remember what you did. So say you're just kind of like flipping the board around, doing a couple different things like that, and then all of a sudden you do a kick flip, then just tell your brain to remember what you just did. Something that really helps with the kick flip is instead of doing it forwards, go fakey. Fakey is just moving backwards on the board and how this helps is when you go to do the kick flip, instead of trying to do some sort of sweeping motion to kind of get the board up in the air, you're already going backwards, which makes the kick flip even easier. So these are kind of the basic steps. Pop the board up like this, and you don't even need to catch the board. Then just work on learning how to flip the board. And once you kind of have a basic flip down like that, then work on aligning your fingers back on the board. And something you might see when I do a kick flip is I kind of just pop the board up, take my fingers off, the board spins, and I put my fingers back on the board. But that is just because I've done so many kick flips. My brain kind of just knows what to do, and my fingers just know what to do as well. But for beginners, it definitely helps to try and pop the board up and just slide your fingers forward. Even if it just looks like this, just work on sliding your fingers forwards like that. So that is kind of the basic idea of how to do the kickflip and something I do see a lot of people do with the kickflip is when they pop up, they do try and only use one finger to flip the board, but it really is a two finger motion. When you do a kickflip on a skateboard, your feet have a lot more control than your two fingers, so you're able to pop the board up and then flip it with only one foot. That is really challenging to do with just your two fingers. So pop the board up, slide two fingers together, keep your fingers locked like this, just like doing peace. Some people say that it helps to just pop the board up and just go peace and that flips the board but the main thing keep your two fingers together when you pop the board up slide your fingers that's gonna flip the board and then catch the board
And once you're starting to get the hang of kickflips, you might start to notice your kickflips are always kind of like tipped up like this and you can never really level them out. What's probably happening is you're flipping the board too close to the nose like this and that's gonna still flip the board but the board isn't gonna level itself out. So what you wanna do instead is pop the board up and slide your fingers right to the lowest point of the board right here and that is pretty much the perfect spot to keep the board level. The final tip of doing a kickflip is do it off of some sort of ledge. It can be a book, it can be a box, it doesn't matter what it's off of, but then right when you pop the board, you're instantly this high off of the ground, making you have more time to do the kickflip. So those are all the basics of how to kickflip a fingerboard. Leave a comment down below if you have any more questions, and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. So I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, maybe consider subscribing. The subscribe button is right over there, one video down there, another one down there. Social media links are in the description down below. Go check those out as well, and I will see you in my next video.